Hello everyone, Code Theorem here. I know it's been since May of 2015 that I last uploaded a video. Um, just a quick rundown of what's happened in my life since and why it's been so busy. Um, in May of 2015, I graduated high school. That summer, I spent just kind of with friends. It was my last time with a lot of those friends. Um, then I started college at Case Western Reserve University. I am studying computer science and cognitive science here. Um, I'm currently in my second year, and this past summer I was an intern at Roblox headquarters in San Mateo, California as a web intern. Now I'm also going to be working part-time while I'm studying at school as a um, like remote contractor for Roblox. So it's been a very, very busy and like strange time in my life, um, but I'm excited to get back to making tutorials. I've been promising I'd do it for as long as I haven't been uploading, and I'm coming through on that promise. So last time I uploaded a video, it was about events and the wait function on events. Today I'm going to go over the fact that events are really special because you can have multiple things connect to an event all at once. Um, so a good analog to this is currently in the United States there is a presidential election going on um, and anytime either of the two main candidates say anything noteworthy every news channel gets in on that right away um, they all take that one event that one phrase even it, sometimes it's just one word that a candidate speaks and then all of the news channels all at once start going on and telling their own stories and handling it their own way. This is a good analog because one event can happen. For instance, I was showing off the touched event and we're going to continue showing off the touched event on this big old red brick here. Um, and we're going to show that off as well as the fact that now we're not just going to change the color of it, we're going to do some more stuff um, with it to kind of, I don't know, just make it more interesting. So let's go ahead and open up this script. So let's go ahead and make a variable, local part, equals game dot workspace dot part. That's just, that's just how we get the brick, of course. Part dot touched connect function uh, part uh, that brick color oops part dot brick color there we go I can totally type equals brick color dot new and actually we'll go with the new random function and it'll just whoa sorry hit the mic there and it will just pick a random color I don't know if that existed when I last made videos and then we're just gonna test that real quick to prove that it works. My new character looks pretty awesome. My username has also changed to Noah Wilcode, but I'm sticking with Code Theorem on Twitter and YouTube, at least for now. Boom, touching it, and it's changing colors, and it looks cool with this new neon effect. I don't know, I like it. Anyway, so that's one script. Let's go ahead and call that color changing script. Again, I promise I can type. It's just it's just not that great today. All right, so we're gonna call this one um, ambience changing script. So I know I haven't gone over this, but in lighting, there's this property called ambient. If you just watch me change it real quick, if I change it to yellow, look at that, everything goes more yellowy. If I change it to red, look at that, everything goes pretty red green, etc. Uh, it can work with any color. It's by default just black. Um, but we're going to use that and we're going to say, all right, so game get service lighting and that's lighting as a service. So you just use the get service thing to do that. And we're actually going to make that a variable because that's just a better way of writing scripts I've found is to do things like this. Um, all right, lighting dot ambient because that is the name of the property again this is not an important thing to know um, dot color brick colors have a property called color and it's just a color three the ambient isn't a brick color property it's a color three property just trust me on this this is just 
property things you don't have to know and aren't pertinent pertinent to the tutorial. So if I touch this, boom! Look at that, the whole environment is changing as well as this brick. Like, it is craziness, right? And I feel like it would be more obvious if I change this to be white so that you can really see this happening. Here we go. Boom. It's just, it is changing colors spectacularly. So the way this works is you're just connecting a v or you're connecting functions called handler functions to the event. And the event keeps track of all of the functions that are connected to it. And every time the event fires, it tells all of those all of those handler functions to fire. And it also provides them with information. So technically we do have the um like argument here although we don't have to actually care about it and that's just the first argument of the touch event is just what other part hit this part but we don't actually care about that so we're just gonna forget that that exists for now you don't have to use it but all of these events or all of these handlers of this event will all get fired almost simultaneously a computer can't actually fire them simultaneously and Lua is single threaded which if you know what that means, it's even more complicated. But basically, they all get fired at, at what you could perceive as the same time. Do keep in mind that that's not true. So if you're running into issues with events, it could be the order at which they're firing. Uh, but they basically all fire at the same time, and then they just react, and you see them react. So the reason that's a good analog to the uh, election year and the media is that Every time they say something worth noting, all of the media sources all jump on it at once. And while this script changes the lighting of the entire world, this other script is just changing the color of the brick. So media, they all react differently as well. Your handler functions can all do their own thing. They, the only thing that holds all these handler functions together is that it's the same event that fires. And it doesn't have to be a touched event. It could be any type of event. And this will just work. And there's no realistic limit to this. You could potentially connect a million handlers to one event. However, that will lag your game pretty bad when it tries to fire off a million functions because one tiny thing happened. In the next video, we're going to go over how you stop listening to an event. So say you just, yeah, you cared about something that was going on then, but now you don't care at all. You don't have to listen to the event anymore. So we're going to go over that in the next video. And we're going to go over that not just for one event handler at a time, but there's also a way to take care of all of them at once, whether there's one, whether there's a million, whether there's absolutely zero. There is a function that handles that as well. So we're going to go over that. Anyway, it's been great talking to you guys again, teaching you guys again on this tutorial, and I hope you liked it. I'll see you guys later.